Kirsten, thank you so much yes. for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having oh, me. Absolutely. Yeah, just get absolutely. Oh, you know, you know that I'm not super tech savvy. So, and this is really true about magical people. Mm -hmm. Generally, mm -hmm. technology goes a little south with, uh, you know, when you're making magic. All systems ago, and I gotta uh, tell you, like, there's always like a little bit of awkwardness, but I love that because it lets the truth shine. Sure. And people are awkward. And if we're not, this is where I think our conversation is gonna go today. If we're not digging in and finding magic inside of us and saying technology is not my jam, but a lot of other things are, yeah. you know, how do we we, how do we learn to to love our unique special self? So that brings us to you are the the founder, the headmistress, if you will, of Fiddleheart Academy for witches and wizards. Is that right? Yeah, witchcraft Witch and wizardry. But craft and wizards will do wizardry. it too. Okay. Um, I can't, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So my uh, I'm a AKA otherwise known as headmistress Hobbly Knob. <laughs> so when when we are there at uh, Fiddleheart. Um, I am in character as the headmistress of the school. So yes, uh, I do. I did start this camp. It's a summer camp. And then I also have my uh, magical persona. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Um, and so we got connected through the camp. Yes, my daughter who you know, has recently in the last maybe two years become obsessed with magic and Harry Potter and astrology. And she's really cultivating this inner part of herself. And we get this flyer from the school about a local camp that's guess what about magic. And she went all in. She, mm -hmm. she saw herself there. She was going. And then we found a conflict in our schedule. So I had to reach out to you, ask for information and support. And Kirsten, we talked for an hour we did. and some, I think, we and did. we just kept going and going. And the conversation brought me to, this isn't just a camp about magic. This is a camp about taking these small, small beautiful children and giving them the skills and tips and practices to live a magical life, right? That's the life coach in you. So tell us, that's the big, big picture. What is Fiddleheart, Fiddleheart Academy Camp? like sure so of course first and foremost it's a youth summer camp and it's more than that it's more than a youth summer camp a lot of people hear camp yeah. and that's a good picture right the kids show up totally we're in a natural environment with we're at the beautiful prosville mills in stockton and that place alone is so magical and super mm -hmm. close to my heart i love the mill and um shout out to the mill and um the kids come onto campus and they're entering a school. So it's very much, um, we use a lot of inspiration from Harry Potter as well as other fantasy genres. Mm -hmm. And so they're coming to the school. We call ourselves Fiddlehearts. We're a school where they're going to, they're gonna learn magic and they attend class just like the characters in the stories. And so cool. So, um, and the minute they walk on, the, the difference, a, a big difference about what we do is that it's incredibly immersive. And so the minute the kids walk on, my, myself and my entire staff are in character as witches, wizards, mages, magical beings of some wow. kind. And um, so the kids come, come and they, they're a little disoriented, right? Because they're not used to adults <laughs> being in full on right. pretend mode. And once they really get that this is what we're doing and we're inviting them into this imaginal realm with us, boom, they are there. They're in. They're so thrilled to be there because mm -hmm. essentially what we're doing, we're modeling for them is we're saying, you want to be in this pretend world. You want to be in this imaginative space. You want to be able to be in connection with this space that you know is inside of you that feels magical and sees magic in the world. And we're gonna be there and create this space with you so that you get to do it full mm -hmm. out. No, you know, no holding back, just all in. And so we never, unless there's an emergency, right? If there's right. a weather emergency or a kid is hurt or, you know, something like that. Um, we're just in, we don't leave the world. So we don't refer to ourselves as doing anything pretend. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And in that sense, it's very, uh, that's the immersive part. That's the part where they really drop deeply into what it is that we're doing. And of course, for some kids, they, they, it becomes sort of their everything while they're there, right? Mm -hmm. And for other kids, they kind of hold back a little bit more. And all of that is absolutely fine. You know, we're all different people. We all want to enter into the degree that we want to. And of course, some kids, they want to go all in, they right. create their own names, they create a magical name for themselves, they come in costume. And other kids are, are you know, they're, they don't want to do that. That's great. It's all fine. Mm -hmm. We don't ask them to um, be anything other than who they are. So we're not asking them to pretend to be something other than they are. Just be in the world with us. But and what a beautiful invitation. Like, yeah. not you have to be someone else, but you get to choose today who you're going to be, right? And gosh, and for adults, don't we all need that? Like, who do I want to be today? What, what do I want to bring to the world? And to teach kids at that level how to be themselves, I think is very powerful. Yeah. It's, it's really, really lovely because what I sense from the kids is that it's very validating for these kids who are super into this, this imaginal, I just call it the imaginal realm. They're very into that. I think it's also mm -hmm. kind of like they kind of hold it close to their hearts. You know, they, 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 yeah. they hold their cards close to their chest right. a little bit because they don't want to be made fun of. And I think particularly as the kids get a little bit older, because our students are eight and a half to 14, that starts to become even more and more of a, of a thing, right? Absolutely. So, we, we squish and push the imagination out of ourselves to the point where it's unfathomable that adults are so immersed in imagination too. Yes. When yes. we should always be exploring ourselves. So I, I completely get that. That's and really I love that you're bringing powerful. this up, actually, because this piece, it's, it's so interesting that you're really hot drawing out this piece <laughs> about the, the, them being themselves right. um, and being able to explore what that means, because um, I'm going to sort of back up a little bit mm -hmm. and, and talk a little bit more about the structure of Fiddleheart and what makes okay. it unique. Perfect. I'm going to tie in what you were just saying, which is that a along with the kids coming and being able to go to class and of course all of our classes are potions and transfiguration and you know <laughs> very arts space right cooking chemistry right. you get the you get the vibe yeah we also have a whole storyline that takes place over the two weeks so the kids are immersed in a mystery adventure that happens and that we have to essentially engage in together as a school and solve Right. That's we have to solve so cool. this mystery. We have to meet the challenge mm -hmm. that the whole school is facing. And this year, every year is a different story, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this year we were just I was just talking to my co-director about this. We were because we were drawing out, we we're really thinking like what are the themes of this story and what's important about the themes of the story. And one of the themes is that we have a I can't, I don't want it. I don't want any spoilers. <laughs> no, don't give it all away. So, but feel but free to share as much as you'd like. a couple characters who are undergoing a kind of transformative moment in their lives. Okay. And one of the themes of that is that they're, we get to witness them as exploring different facets of themselves. Mm -hmm. And. And essentially in witnessing that and supporting them through that, what we were talking about is that we're modeling. We don't talk about it. It's not so quite so overt in the way right. that stories hopefully don't, you know, bash you over the head. Tell you what to do, right. but essentially they kind of tell you but we're, what and how you can do it. Yeah, well, we're, and we're modeling essentially the story itself is modeling the idea that we can try on a lot of different ways of being in the world identities, ways of expressing ourselves, and that that's, it's okay to keep evolving and changing mm -hmm. and, um, and to be in that experiential and experimental place. And, and, um, and to and be in so, a safe space doing it. Yeah. And to be in a yeah. space where that's the goal. Yeah. And it's not about being right and wrong and finding your identity today and sticking with it forever. Yeah. But but exploring, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. oh, I love mm -hmm. it. And that's mm -hmm. the magic, right? Like yeah. that's, 
I believe, and we've probably talked about this, but I believe that there's magic in all of yeah. us and that it is when we listen to that divine voice within, call it from wherever spiritual universal realm you want to, it does not matter to me. But if we can tap into today, what is our gift? What is our special piece that we can offer the world? Then suddenly the whole world gets to experience magic, yeah. right? Yeah. So naturally and I was very drawn to that as, as we explored what you're doing at Fiddleheart. It's really, really fun to see the kids exploring this facet of mm -hmm. themselves in this environment with full permission. Right. And, um, and they do, you know, what's so interesting is that they do tend to feel very safe there once they drop in, you know, mm -hmm. it's like any new thing. As adults, we yeah. step into a new environment and we're going to be a little hypervigilant, right? We're going to feel yep. a little sense that our, you know, our feelers are out. We're getting a sense of what's going on. And hopefully as adults, we mm -hmm. have landed into a space inside of ourselves that's space that's safe, excuse me, safe, even in the midst of new and uncertain times, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. our experiences. And, but kids, you know, they're young. <laughs> they're a little more um, trusting, forgiving something, but they can get into it sooner, faster, easier. But that goes back to they still have their imaginations, yeah. right? We have to, yeah. and listen, safety first, I'm a safety okay. girl, right? We have to yeah. be aware of our surroundings. But we've lost imagination for what could be possible in those new situations. And, it, and we start with fear. And what I love here is that you're giving them the skills to trust themselves and to move beyond that fear. And one thing I've, that we talked about yeah. that I recall is, and it's not pushing a certain mindset, it's pushing skills, but you might call it the kids are going to learn a spell, but what you're really doing is a mindfulness activity, right? Teaching them the patterns and the language to check in with where they are or to, I don't know, make something levitate, right? But it's about making our souls levitate. And I, I just am really, really, really keen on this because with all the things coming at our kids today, when my kids want to put Harry Potter on, I say, absolutely. We will watch that all day as opposed <laughs> to a lot of these other things, you know? And I, so I was really, really drawn to Fiddleheart and all the ways that you are, it seems to be carrying forth a lot of the work that I try to do in my coaching mm -hmm. business to this younger group. Um, so how long have you been doing this? Like this isn't your first year, right? No, no, no. This is what we've had, you know, the pandemic, we went virtual, then the next year we did something funky, then the, when we came back and then we took get last year off, but all in yes. all we did in 2016. Mm -hmm. So we've been at that, this for a while. Very cool. And um, yes, yeah, sort of really fleshing out, you know, I think you and I were talking about how when I first started Fiddleheart and I did this as a, actually a family adventure, mm -hmm. if you will, my husband is a professional actor. I come cool. from an arts, a performance arts background as well as a dancer and theater artist. And we had our own kids who were in love with Harry Potter and we just decided to create a, we decided to create a camp of our own. Let's do it. But not the idea of actually doing the camp. It was mm -hmm. just really a creative exercise. Anyway, we did get, we, we decided to do it. And um, really essentially the way I feel about it is that Fiddleheart keeps teaching me what Fiddleheart is. Mm -hmm. So, and because it is so, there is no Fiddleheart without the students and the families and my unbelievable talented staff. Right. It's this al alchemy of, all of us coming together collaboratively that makes Fiddleheart what it is. And so every time we are doing Fiddleheart, I have this, in a sense, meta awareness saying, what is Fiddleheart teaching me about itself? What am I learning, not only from the experience personally, but about why this is a meaningful um, venture to be mm -hmm. on? And, um, and that's a great practice to do with all of our businesses yeah. and endeavors and you know where we spend our energy and time should come with reflection like that so kudos to you for seeing it and doing <laughs> it yeah yeah so so why fiddleheart why the name or where did that come from well that i have to absolutely you know give it up to my amazing husband doug he's just a genius when it comes to naming things. <laughs> 
So he came up with the name Fiddleheart. You know, to be honest, I just I just think it was born out of his. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it just came out of him, and it just works. Uh, yes, and it absolutely worked. Like we are our crest is the fiddlehead ferns. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, we have them all over here um, and they're actually coming up now. And when they unfurl they're mm. it's just gorgeous. And they often unfurl against each other in the shape of a heart. So that became our crest. Mm. And um, that's wonderful. We also incorporate music a lot in, in the camp. We have like music magic. <laughs> So, um, and I don't know. Yeah, it just spoke to us. We knew immediately that that was the right word for us. And also because, you know, heart is, a, love is one of our values at Fiddleheart. It's one of our four values. And so that crest really, it's, it, we're, we're inside the heart. That all the four we have four houses the kids yep. get sorted into houses and they're all within this heart and so you know that for me was really important because it's what we see in the books is that the kids get very divided mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and young kids will do that that's really normal and developmental for them right. to sort of like start to say well i'm here and you're over there and we're different and I'm better and you're worse, right? That's really normal. Right. And so I don't, you know, I don't want to disparage something that is a really human and normal thing to do, particularly for kids. Um, and listen, for us mm -hmm. as adults as well. Mm -hmm. But we do, do want to have awareness and to be able to say, I choose out of this more almost like early brain, right? <laughs> Sorry, it's right. an older brain's way of relating to the world mm -hmm. and so although we allow the kids and we encourage the kids to bond in their smaller groups we also always turn back to this idea that we are together and we need to be together we need I to be it. together in community within this heart and um being in and i don't really shy away from this our a loving relationship to each other and well, and everything, mm -hmm. you know, everything, it always kind of right. comes back to that, like our storyline, the way that we relate to the storyline is always coming from that place. And again, I'm not saying we talk about it so overtly. We're trying to um, live it, right? We're, We're living through the values, the fictional world, mm -hmm. right? Because that's, you know, once you start saying this stuff to kids, they're like, nah, 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 you know, <laughs> Precisely. So, if you say, I'm yeah. going to teach you a mindfulness exercise, they yeah. might tune out. But if you say, I'm going to teach you a magic spell. Yes. Right. Exactly. Suddenly they're, they're like, wait a minute. Exactly. Is that real? And you know, <laughs> from our previous conversation that that is really what lit me up mm -hmm. when I really realized I wanted to do this was because of my life coaching. And I'd worked with teens. I'd been, I had been doing workshops with teens and um, and I loved it. I loved doing what I was doing. I also obviously work with adults. Most of my, most of my clients are adults. And, but I have this real soft spot for young people. I've been working with young people for a long time. And, and when I realized that I could really start to enfold all of these life coaching skills um, and tools into this magical world, and yeah. then the kids would have complete buy-in. They would yeah. not think oh now they're telling me i'm gonna do some mindfulness exercise and i'm gonna do some meditation right <laughs> right they, that sounds like right? work <laughs> it's exactly as you're saying michaela this idea that oh i'm learning a spell and i get to get in touch with this magical part of myself mm -hmm. and then the barriers are all down yeah. for them in a good way yeah. right in a good way and there's there's no resistance. There's no resistance to being able to incorporate that. And again, like I said, you know, for some kids, they're like, oh, that was cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And for kids, I mean, what I hear from the parents is that it is genuinely deeply affecting for them and something that they carry with them for years and years to come. And so, so um, I love hearing stuff like yeah. that because then I, I get to be reminded. It's like, oh, right. This is <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's really special and unique work, you know, so we'll circle back. It's, it's not just a summer camp. There's nothing wrong with just summer. Oh camp. yeah. Nothing. 
right? My kids love summer yes. camp. But this is something different. This is where, yes, your kids are going to go to day camp, but they're also going to have, to your point, a genuinely unique experience that has skills and mindsets that can really help them down the line. Um, and they're going to have fun. Yes. They're going to have a blast. Well, that's just it, right? Right. Exactly. That's it. And they're not and even going to I love know. the combination between this sort of deep learning mm -hmm. and fun because that's what we want. You know, yes. and fun is another thing we forget about when we're adults. We forget to have fun. We forget how to have fun. Preach. And so that um, just always, you know, giving permission. Again, giving permission to the kids to say, this is fun. We're having fun. They don't have such a hard time with the fun thing, right? right. right. <laughs> um, and that these things can go together. They don't have to be separate. We don't have to to separate them out like oh now i'm doing this deep personal learning and getting in touch with myself and over here i'm having fun that these things can dance together Happen at the same time yes and in fact it's so much same is true for adults that's right right like, exactly right literally like when we talk I about it does not apply to adults <laughs> right and and when we say like you got to do the work right yeah. we automatically go oh that sounds yeah. hard but what we're talking about is just finding little ways to make the work fun, to make it engaging, to make it not alone, to do it with a yes. collaborative where there's a common interest, right? So, you know, I'm sold. We're in. My daughter will be yeah. there. It's going to be epic. <laughs> uh, when she thought she couldn't go, I'm here to tell you, I have not seen a sadness so deep in her mm -hmm. ever, I th think. And it just was like, all right, we got to figure this out. So we will be there. And like I said, I am eagerly awaiting when you do the adult version of summer camp so that I can go and and figure out how to explore more of the magic in me. Excellent. Um, well, we'll, so we'll, collaborate. Those... We'll, we'll do a little collaboration together, oh, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Yes. Well, we've already discussed yep. some ideas, so we're going to have to keep going. Yep. Um, but so for everyone listening and for those that are curious, how do we find out more about Fiddleheart? Sure, sure. So we are at uh, Fiddleheart magic.com that's our website so it's exactly how it sounds fiddle heart f-i-d-d-l-e h-e-r-a h-e-a-r-t <laughs> heart fiddle heart magic.com and um there's a lot more information obviously the dates which are um july what are they the july 8th through the 19th Eight. this year it's a two-week um two-week adventure but you'll find everything, you know, there's a frequently asked questions page, you know, just tons of information. And of course, if you reach out on the website, you do the contact me, it's coming to me personally. It's me. Hi. Um, I did that. So, it works. She's great yes. at responding. <laughs> so you'll get a response from me. It'll be me. Hi. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, and oh, I want to tell everybody that this week, because most people here are local, right? Um, we're going to be at the Shad Fest. Oh, fun. So Shad Fest is in Lambertville. We're going to have a booth. Uh, I, all the kids who come to Fiddleheart get a, a wand made by me. Um, they're, they're, I like to think of them as unique pieces of art. Anyway, the, I'll, I'll have the wands out selling other magical wares, but also really, really fun is that we're going to have a little potions table. So there's going to be an interactive table if any of you have kiddos who are of the age um, and would be really interested in experimenting there. And uh, so anyway, that's this weekend, 11 to five in Lambertville, Shad Fest, come oh, check us out. There's a little nice. discount too, if you come and visit me, I'll give you a discount code on awesome. um, the camp. So, and I would love to meet you. I, I, yeah. I love, I wanna meet the magical families out there. So. Um, Cause there's magic within all of us. And part of what I believe our purpose here is, is to find it and then to share the heck out of it. So I yeah. am incredibly grateful that you've chosen to follow your passion and, mm -hmm. and to share it so generously. Um, so to all those listening, please check out Fiddleheart, help your little ones find some more magic in them and stay tuned potentially for a collaboration where we help adults find the magic too. Cause yeah. That's fun. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> and we're here to have fun. So Kirsten Hara, headmistress, um, say it again. Hobbly knob. Hobbly, Hobbly knob. <laughs> I want to say gobbly knob for whatever reason. My brain's just okay. stuck on that. 
<laughs> Maybe I'll I'm go. thinking about lunch. <laughs> it's a little bit like my first name. I kind of swing with anything, you know, at the beginning. Nice. Kirsten is one of those too. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining Pleasure. us and to thank all those for... who participated. It's always great to see you here. Um, wherever you are, there is a place that can help you find magic, can help you and your kids find magic. And we just sometimes have to know to look for it, right? So even if you're not in my local New Jersey area, if you feel the urge to explore the magic in you, there are people that can help you do that. I can help you. Kirsten can help you. I see Coffee with Nicoa. My friend Nicoa is here. She can help you. There are so many people out there who are qualified and capable of helping you find the magic. And that's kind of all I want for people. So I'm here, happy here. to share you today. So Kirsten, make yourself a fabulously great and magical day. And to everyone else, continue on wherever you're going with a little extra magic in your heart. All right. Take care, everyone.